handle <laughs> crap. Um, the handle broke off this. Oh no! Eh, it's old as shit. It's from JC Penney's. I, bl I blame uh, fucking. Uh, I do too. Yeah, but you know what? Dude, like we we're picking up. Some, uh, I think Tim picked it up or Andy picked it up. Also, also the handle broke right off. Wait, you know what's crazy? I'm surprised it didn't break. Oh god, there's buttons. You guys have buttons? Yes, there are buttons in there. I gotta buy a button from you. You can have one for free. Ooh. Those are from the last album. Take a sticker. Are there stickers in there? Yeah, one or some. There's one. Take that sticker. Okay. And shove it up the rack. Like, we had some good news, so grab a couple of shots. Do you want Johnny Walker or you want Maker's Mark? Let's do a Johnny. I'm gonna take a scotch. Okay, well, I, do you want Johnny Walker? Or that's just, that's the scotch. It's whiskey. Uh, scotch whiskey. You, I'm not going to be pedantic. <laughs> you know that scotch I is that a kind of whip to you. Oh, did I get the Fargo one? I like this one. You got this one for me. Yeah. <laughs> Fargo, you betcha. Oh, man. All right. Well, I, I, don't I was going to correct you, but I was like, no. Nope, I don't know how much we can really say like about your good news, but you're... I'll say it, and if you say we can't say on the show, then fuck What's my it. good news? You, your company let you, for lunch, you and everybody in the department... Oh, that's good. Go see it. <laughs> for your there's lunch some peat, There's some peat in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, got, it's real earthy. Um, mm -hmm. This must be an islay. I say it as if I know. But yeah, your company, like, you guys went to see it as like a yeah, department. Yeah, we went to see it. And for your lunch break, which is fucked up as hell, mm -hmm. and then uh, I got a. I'm now the first shift supervisor. So congratulations to you. We'll celebrate my salary increase. Pitter patter. I'm gonna sip mine oh, if you don't mind. Oh man, that's so good. I'm gonna do a sippy sip on mine. Let's start the. We'll start the show. All right, let's start the show. Hello and welcome to the Pritchard Podcast. Brought to you by this is a joint collaboration you between already fucked it up. between Trentendo and Baltic Start Effect. Start over again. Do it again. Hello, this is Spike Lee joint. This is that. Yep, yep. Start over. This take take three. Welcome to the Preacher Podcast. This is uh, brought to you by Trentendo and the Baltic Effect. I'm Nate, and that's Trent. I've worked with better, but, but not many. <laughs> yeah, man. So, like, I never listened to you when you introduced the podcast. I go quick, so I, do I don't know. Yeah, most people don't. Yeah. <laughs> or when I say anything. So. No, not yeah, really. Uh, in good spirits today. We had some spirits for the first time before the mm -hmm. show, and uh, it's nice. It's nice. I was gonna save the. Johnny I got the Jane Walker here. Jane Walker. I was gonna save the Jane Walker for the last episode, but we had a, a fucking red letter day, and it was and, a red letter day. Yeah, so good time to have a drink. Uh, mm -hmm. Good episode and everything. It's a perfect one Great to episode. drink a bunch of booze and puke about. Mm -hmm. But um, oh my god, that was so funny. Yeah. Puke is funny. Oh man, we got it. Yeah, and then falling in it. We should get into. Boy, oh boy. Episode four oh eight. Uh, fear of lore. Fear of the lore. Fear of the lore. The rings of the flies. Of the flies. Yep. I think I can. I drank out of it before, Do and it. I, I cleaned it. Do it. It feels waxy on the inside, but I think it's, it's the probably, sealant. Oh, the wax would be the sealant. Yeah. Oh, fuck it. I'm doing it. Do it. So what time is it, Nate? Time for the Nate Bjork Podcast Pod Quiz. You can submit. You can submit your questions to Nate at NateBjork.com. You can submit your Don't questions. Don't do that. You can submit your questions to BalticEffect at gmail.com. Hey, hey, Daryl. Hey, Daryl. Don't do that. I know you're about to because you're a wise anchor. Don't do that. Wise do this anchor. part. Do what he's going to say right now. Uh, BalticEffect at gmail.com. Nice. Point to the subject line what it is. All right. Yep. Uh, also send your thoughts. All right. Uh, these questions are submitted by no one. Okay. Oh, I, no. I only, Jay must have been busy and none of you I only anything. wrote down two th words. Oh, I can't believe you guys aren't doing the video podcast anymore after this season. <laughs> I only wrote down two words, so they're both going to be like really quiz questions. It's okay. It's fine. There's, there might be... I might be drinking something that's not... It was said it was food safe when they gave it to us, and then we drank beer out of it like all day. Well, if they said it's food safe, then it's food safe. But they they gave other instructions too that I didn't do. Oh, like, like you had to dry it, and I did, and then you got like rub it with like fucking cooking oil, and I'm like, why well, don't want to? Yeah, oil it, baby. Like it's a little cast iron skillet. It's fine. Um, what I do for the show quiz. What year was the Mister? Little Mr. Whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Dusseldorf? That's one of them. 1979. Yep. Those are, you got both of them right. 
Boom, bitches. Yep. It's because I got Maker's Mark. Well, let's uh, let's talk about yours. Okay. Shall we? Sure. You start. I will. <laughs> what year did moving in stereo come out? Oh, uh, was it seventy nine? Can't be. Seventy eight. Oh, that's old. I thought it would have been like 81, 82. Mm -hmm. 78, baby. I got a question. Do you know, is that the song that's in, um, uh, 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 it's the pool scene in Fast Times at Ridgemont High? Never seen that movie. Okay. I'm not a huge fan of it. It's okay. Um, I know. They were like, oh, you, thought you like movies. That'll sound great. Um, yeah, I know. Now crunch it. Um, but no, I, I. Mine just says could. Oh, Jesus. In bed. Could in bed. I'm doing a, I'm doing a, it chapter two reference. Oh, uh, spoilers. Mm hmm. Spoiler alert. Tony Stark <laughs> dies at the end of it part two. Zoom in on this. You don't have to. I'm not gonna. It will, be, look, it will look like shit if I do. Be that. prepared to modify your plans. We also have a cameraman. In bed. It'd be a digital zoom. It'd be like four pixels if I got that small. No, I mean the user will zoom in. It, it would be the same. It may be less pixels. <laughs> So this episode, mm -hmm. good episode. I'm glad that you threw some food in at this point in time. Yeah, um, I didn't have a lot of uh, individual like point notes to talk about. I had kind of more overarching thoughts, some questions maybe for you, mm -hmm. some kind of mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. thought, some thought uh, promises. I don't know. Um, and I was gonna let you run things through and through, uh, but I will vamp until you finish that cookie. So like, what's your favorite thought of, what's your first thought of this episode? Like, I really enjoyed it. It was a fun and a fun episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was fun and a fun. You had, you had like, uh, Tulip and Cass, now, my notes really sucked. Like, this is real, this is what I wrote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, here's the thing. Um, it so like so I'm gonna, fast, like yeah. everything. So here are the things I liked. Uh -huh. Off the top of my head. Uh -huh. uh, Casting Tulip playing house with Tom Purdue, that was adorable and funny. <laughs> It's mommy Pinecone, Daddy Pinecone. Who's this one? Humperdoo Humper Pinecone. Yeah. You love the Humperdoo stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, back in the, you know, that's the kind of thing like somebody going like, Duh! like that mm -hmm. was very, very much super 90s y, late 90s y, like kind mm -hmm. of humor. You got to think about like how Brack talked in the Brack show. Yeah. Characters on Space Ghost, Coast to Coast, a lot of Adult Swim type stuff. Uh, doing characters that are, you know, special, mm -hmm. special Fred characters, let's put it that yeah. way. And then, so it, and here's the thing: I feel like that. I feel like it should be an offensive caricature of a person with disabilities, but it's not. It's funny. Like for I don't there's know a lot about the show that should be offensive, right? But like for some reason, and um, just for the listener who does who's not aware, I I have a lot of I've I, I've 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 history working with uh, special needs children with special needs and stuff, mm -hmm. the handicapable. Yeah, and and I do and I do get in I do get offended easily. Absolutely. Um, Mm -hmm. And um, and and for some reason, but your your this your alarm's is not going off on this. Isn't it's not. So I, I um and I could be wrong. You write right in bubbly effect at gmail .com. But like yeah, absolutely. I'd love. To I hear think a it's. I just. I just. For some reason, this portrayal is just delightful. It's already so freaking offensive. It's already like the son of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like you've got. Like Hitler, you know, teaming up with the actual Jesus and God mm -hmm. biting an eyeball. We'll get back to that. But, I mean, you're already in a land of craziness. I don't normally go in for this kind of stuff. I'm not the biggest Seinfeld fan, but his comedians and cars getting coffee. Some of them I actually really like because I really like a lot of the comedians on them. Um, that Kate McKinnon's is incredible. Uh, but he did one with Seth Rogen. And a lot, uh. I know. A lot of times those comedians and cars getting coffee is just Seinfeld bitching about things okay and this one was partially him bitching about seth rogan's beard like they take a a moment to talk about him having a beard and he's like he's like why do you have a beard he's like i don't know it just kind of covers my face but yeah, i figured out because like me i figured i can make a better looking face with a beard um and and seinfeld's like i just want to know what you're hiding under there mm. what's going on what, what are you not telling us and uh anyway the reason i bring it up is they actually had a great conversation about the line like there's a lot of comedians nowadays that talk about like oh i can't do comedy about anything they talk about like the lines get like getting smaller the the things that they can make fun of because comedians you know to be on the edge of comedy you got to really you got to push the limit and then people go overboard and, and now we we have a world where social media is so you know in, in, in part of ingrained in our lives if you go too far everyone in the world's gonna give it to you even times when you don't go too far, people try and give it to you. Um, 
X is going to give it to you. Now, I want to talk about that. Yeah, um, and, and he said... I want to jump... Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Well, Rogan had said that he doesn't feel like it's closing up. He doesn't feel like he's being narrowed into a box. He said he, he thinks that, number one, you got to be smarter than the thing that you're making fun of or you're talking about. And he was saying, too, about how, like... You can make fun of, like, really awful stuff. Like, we love to laugh at really terrible things, he said, but you just also... He had a, a very clever way of saying it. He's a very smart dude, but he had a, he basically talked about ways to not say that, oh, you're taking this from me, versus, well, I just have to do it a certain way, and then we can make fun of stuff. I think he does that yeah. a lot in things. Yeah, so I want to circle back to this, because this is... And I don't, I don't want this to become a... a Nate and Trent's take on comedy. Uh, no, 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 but uh, I do. Because I this is topical with the SNL thing this week. Oh, God damn. Um, I forgot so, about that. Happened. But, like, I don't think comedy should be pushing, is, is by definition something that pushes boundaries. I think comedy is something that has to be funny. Is it funny? Then it's, then it's comedy. Yeah, like, that's a good thing. You don't, you should, I feel like if you feel like political correctness or whatever your thing is. Mm hmm. If you feel like that's keeping you from being funny, then maybe you're just not funny. That's an interesting point. I like, like that. I like just that be fu one. just like, and that's you kinda, don't have to hurt someone's feelings to make fu be funny. And if that someone was kind says, of his point yeah, too. and if someone says it hurts their feelings, believe them. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, um, but uh, so, so it's interesting that we have something like on paper, mm -hmm. you know, or just like a, a a plain Jane outline of what it is should be incredibly offensive yet like i mean between the two of us some some warning is gonna trip when it's like you've gone too far i feel like it because we're already in this world it's kind of i don't want to say okay but it's, that's all that's the best term that i can come up with so it is kind of interesting um that it's happening and they're doing it and it's receiving well and it's something that was in a comic back in the day when we did stuff like that all the time and now we would go ew you did that yeah yeah you were saying things that everybody else said back then? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jesus. Anyway, so, yeah, I, I, I thought this was this was good to, to bring this up, so that's mm -hmm. really good. So that's happening. Yeah, they're playing house with him, and it made it harder to kill him. Yeah. And I got so, not angry, I was frustrated. I was just like, press the button, mm. do it. And I can't tell if it messed up yeah. or if she actually pressed it or not. It, it was clicking. Uh, yeah, I like what was it by the time she got to it? Was it too far away? Was it like, was it because it was you have to get proximity? Mo yeah, like, but surely they would have thought about the fridge thing, mm -hmm. especially since they had the fridge one of the th like partially open. Well, Tulip does have the curse, you know, everything like, like oh, you goes know, wrong. she does, she does something goes wrong like with she, her, she might have fucked it up. Yeah, I, I would like they've to been think putting it on him every day for three months, mm -hmm. like. You're going to, at some point, forget to do one thing. Sure, sure, sure. Or divine intervention. A lot of times it's God just, like, screwing up her plans, you know what I mean? Because this version in this show is is mm -hmm. um, is that way. I, I got to tell you about something. So, I was having a conversation. Do you, do you know what an alms box is? Is that, like, where you get offerings for poor people? It is! I didn't know what that was. I was having a D and d discussion. Alms today. for the poor. Right. Well, so, like, there's a... If you become, like, a cleric, like, priest-type character, you can get that stuff and, like, a pack of things, and in that pack of things is an alms box. And I was like, what the shit is that? And they were like, oh, that's where you, like, get offerings and stuff. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I was like, what do you do with that? And Dungeons and Dragons, can I, like, prop a door open with it? Can I hit somebody with it? And they were like, no, 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 you could, like... Preach about your deity and get people to come in and join in and raise money. Like, if you need money for something, you could get them to donate. And I'm like, that's God's money, <laughs> is what I said out loud. <laughs> Without even thinking about it, I was just like, that's God's money. Mm -hmm. Sweet little five-year-old Trent. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so that that's a big... That's a huge part of what's happened on the episode. That and Jesse coming back is the other, I, I feel like, big thing. Yeah, you know, we got what's going on with Hair Star, where he's getting his beauty back. Mm -hmm. That whole thing with the kids, like like the pageant boys, mm -hmm. beating him up in a bathroom. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! Oh my god! The cannibals! The cannibals! Yeah. I there are two things that I was like, I know happened in the comic, and I don't think they're gonna happen. One was cannibals. The other one, I think they're doing it. I'm like really excited. Yeah. I'm really excited because they kind of like. They kind of like nipped at it this episode, and it's fucking cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, your leg's already off. Just eat it. 
<laughs> it's already off and cooked. They... All right, we're here. Let's have the conversation. They're already, like... You're okay with cannibalism in an extreme situation. <laughs> yeah. I am not. <laughs> I'm real selfish. Real selfish. I don't want to eat people, even in extreme situations. And I don't want someone to eat me because I don't want to turn into poop. Mm. So... It puts me at a crossroads when Nate's like, no, if you die, I'm totally going to eat you. I'm mm -hmm. going to just eat this shit. I won't taste good. Mm -mm. I drink. I, I might be drinking turpentine right mm -hmm. now. Um, <laughs> did you watch? Nah, we'll talk about it later. Uh, <laughs> so this happens in the show. So, for some reason, I didn't think about auto cannibalism. Not that I want to do it. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, like, if I was going to eat any human meat and I found out it was mine... If there are varying degrees of anger, if it was my own, I would be less angry than if it was someone else, like a randos. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like normally, like in Walking Dead, they show up at Terminus, they're eating people that had been yeah. coming through. That's... Oh. Well, like it's the one guy who I sent you the, think, the link about this. Uh, it's the guy who fed his friends his foot. Um, yeah. Because, uh, I mean, it was... It was uh, um, what, what's the word for when they take off your, a limb? Oh, amputee. It was an amputee. amputee. Yeah. yeah. And so then he's like, and he didn't like sneak it on him. He was like, we're going to eat my foot. And he like hired a professional chef to like make a really nice like tacos or whatever. Like some, you know, taste it. Taste it. Mm -hmm. Apparently it was good. Yeah. So like, uh, like that'd be kind of a fun little treaty treat. Uh, just to try. Uh, um, one thing I was thinking about. Uh, it's bothering me. I don't think I read that article. I remember something about it. My brain yeah. partitioned it off to save me from the emotional scarring. Well, I should have eaten my appendix. No, that's full of poison. <laughs> yeah, it was That was you. killing me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Man, that was a scary day. I'm Probably just trying to think of you. things that got taken off of me. Foreskin. <sighs> I wouldn't eat that. Yeah. They probably threw that away. Do you want to save up all the skin you slough off at night? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, called my pillows. <laughs> ring on your mattress. Mm -hmm. Can we get like a bunch of like yeah. ratchet straps and then boink? And you're just like, Whoa. it'd be salty. Yeah. <laughs> Remember in Venture Brothers when there's the, the human, he's like a callus or something. He's supposed to be like the rock, but it's more skin. Yeah. yeah. And he's just like, uh, hey, 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 we don't use those pejorative terms. He's like, you know, he's like, well, maybe you should have a thicker skin. He's like, he's got skin that's six inches thick. How do you think that makes him feel? He goes, itchy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, ever, ever divided, <laughs> cannibalism is the thing that divides me and Nate. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. I think there's a lot of things that we see eye to eye on. Yeah, and, yeah. And maybe the rest of the world is like, well, we don't need to agree on cannibalism. I think that's what makes the world special. <laughs> yep. But then there's also the spigot dick. That's funny, but oh man, man. that was hard to look at. Yes, it was. They went for it with this. They yeah. were like, it's the last season. Let's just, you know what? What if we just did it? You know, we're doing this cartoon. I really comic. hate that. I we're, hate the spigot dick. Yeah, but it's bothersome. Yeah. Oh, it yeah, bothers yeah, yeah. me so much. Um, the whole thing with Hairstar. It's interesting on the surface when you watch it. It's kind of hard to watch because you got that. You got him eating himself. He's got the literal worst like fake appendage ever, too, uh, for that matter. And then he goes to hang himself with his sash, mm -hmm. and it. You called it. You said that's a slip knot's going to come out. It mm -hmm. does catches on his nipple piercings, which we all forgot about. Mm -hmm. He is doing suspension for a second because people do that. That's fucking. Cr I, w I That's also a weird thing that I don't suspension. I, that's yeah. That's something I don't think I would feel comfortable watching. God bless you if you do it. I would not feel comfortable watching it. What intrigues me is the people that I know that are into it are like like how into it they are. Yeah. Like the like. Well, you're not just like kind of into. Something yeah, you like can't that. be like you know like. I'm just kind of into suspension. I'm really into suspension. Oh, 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 oh. that's enough. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Oh man. Good good suspension. Woo! Good yeah. suspension. Good suspension session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lots of love. Uh, no, no, no. Like, I have talked with many of people that they, like, the meticulousness, how they, like, how it, like, it, it ingratiates your thought. There's a lot of things that people get into where they just, like, they're in that mode and they, you know, have to do it. They're, they're like, looking on Amazon to order stuff and they can't wait till it gets there. Or they're, like, going to a store and ordering something or making stuff. A lot of people make stuff uh, on their own. They're really good metallurgists and what have you. Um, and I, I have watched some and uh, I, I don't want to do it for me. 
But uh, there's something I do appreciate about it. There's something I find intriguing. Mostly it's the people themselves, um, what they bring to it. And the enjoyment they get of it. Because a lot of people will mislabel them. I, mm -hmm. I put them firmly in the, the realms of artists. Like I, I, the, the care and the thought they put into that stuff is really intriguing. I don't put that much care into anything I do. So it's, it's awesome. But they definitely don't do it like Hairstar. <laughs> Rips the nips off. No nips, no jennies. No left leg, right leg. Should I ask that? I wouldn't know. Uh, left leg? Right leg. Think so? Probably. But, uh, and then God shows up in that moment. Of, and at his very worst, pee trickling out of his face. It must have like turned it or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. And so then it's just like whatever pee was left in there. Oh. Oh my God. And then God shows up and, and we, we have two moments of God in this You're going to get UTIs because that's open. Because it's not like a sealed, like your penis or whatever you're using. Mm -hmm. Uh Seal shut after you're done. Mine, mine has like a, a zip. I have when I'm have done. I got the yellow and green, you know. Oh yeah. But it's also got the little clasp that, that zip. Because yep. in case if you don't match them right up, yeah, it's it's you know it's a, it's a bad sandwich. Yeah, bad sandwich. Um, but but also the metal. Uh, <laughs> UTI yeah. is probably all of that. But uh, we've got God being very Old Testament God in this, and um, you can definitely kind of see. The guy that wrote the comics, you can kind of see his take on religion and things like that. It's it's a real... I'm being real pejorative with it, but it's a real fuck you attitude. Like, I'm, I'm boiling it down to oversimplicity. But it's to get to the point of, you know, God shows up and, and he's like, you you never asked me. Mm -hmm. What the fuck? What? What? Okay, yeah, we get it. He lied to you. And then he admitted they lied. And then you're like, okay, whatever. <laughs> and then Jesse with everything... We got the ants up the butt in the tube. Um, we've got the aunt literal on fire, and then back to being tempted to sit on the throne. Brings him back to life just to tell him. And then him, like rats in a barrel. I felt like that was a step back on torture. Yeah, I would like I would start I, with I would, rats in a barrel. Pick, you know, I'd go rats in barrel uh -huh. on fire, ants up the butt. You could befriend the rats. Yeah, like they're just cuddly little guys. Yeah, there's little rats. Rats, there's unless they're like. Real bitey. Now I maintain they used to cause the bubonic plague, but that's been some yeah. years ago. Yeah. I'm doing my inglorious past. Oh, okay. But, um, but uh, yeah, no, he comes back, runs into God, mm -hmm. and God's just like, yeah, you were so close, I bite. And then spits that honker out. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. And leaves him there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a lot of interesting And it was, stuff. he did it because Jesse had the nerve to look him in the eye. And, the ki and, and he's like, did your, your dad raise you this way? Which is yeah. like an even more of a... Yeah. You know, because like, well, his dad didn't really raise him, did he? Mm -hmm. He did to a certain point until God killed him. Mm -hmm. um, truly, truly... Uh, it's an interesting thing. I was talking to somebody the other day about... We, Handmaid's Tale came up. Mm -hmm. It's I a made, real bummer, man. I made that joke. Because uh, I watched like, a, like 10 minutes of it and I was like... This is fucking sad. I just look at Nate and I'm like, this show's a real bummer, So, yeah, man. context. He didn't know what the show was about. And yeah. so he sits down to watch some of it with me, like, during season one. Mm -hmm. And I'm like... I have a passing knowledge. And so he walks in and all of a sudden it's real... It's sad. And <laughs> Trent's like, this show's a real bummer, man. Like, as if he didn't know... Because he didn't know... <laughs> Ish. <laughs> I had a passing knowledge, but it just it, it made me laugh. Not at a whole time. thing. Like, not like oh, remember like, that episode? Like under, it's an under. It's like the most understatement of the year. Do you? Yeah. Yes. You remember that episode of Handmaid's Tale? And they all got froyo. Yeah. It's such a good one, man. What a good. Mm -hmm. I was so happy. And that's kind of a, my chief complaint with like Game of Thrones. Is just, they're always yeah, no one's smiling. I was talking. You haven't some, seen Game of Thrones. You've never seen a single I, you episode. You have forced me to watch an episode. Okay. And I've watched another episode. Okay. Yeah. So I've watched two. Okay. So never mind. Your 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 criticism is yep. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm just saying like it just never. I don't want to watch the show. It's just a, a natural feeling. But that's also a complaint. But I was talking to somebody about Handmaid's Tale, and, I, and they were like, "Well, you don't always watch just happy shows. What like, sad shit happens in?" I just finished Daredevil a while back, and they're mm -hmm. like, "Sad stuff happens in uh, Breaking Bad, greatest show ever." Um, Preacher, sad stuff happens. Yeah, it's just. It's like it's a fraction off of what I'm looking for. It's in the realm. It's the hue of sad, but it's like, it's like tragic or unfortunate. That to me is like sad, but with a high contrast. And you got a lot of that in Game of Thrones and a ton of that in Handmaid's Tale. I don't think that those two entities are bad IPs. 
I think they're good. I think they're incredibly well made. I think that there's a reason they're so popular. That's a relief that you approve of them. I'm just, I'm, fuck you. <laughs> God, you get to go watch it on your lunch break one time and you're fucking king of the roost. King of the, look at my dick. Oh, I'm glad no. you approve. No. Fuck, man. Let me put you on the defensive and then just say, well, good for you. Wow. That, I don't, yeah. Next topic. Um... <laughs> I wasn't trying. Okay, I can't fucking win. Um, but no, I, 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 I like the tragedy that's in the show. Sure, um, it does make me oh. a skosh bit a hypocrite, and I get that. Well, and like it's, it helps that there's like, there's comic relief. Mm. Okay. The comic relief is really what puts it through. Like, remember that? Oh fuck, she put. I went back and saw what she said. She put blueberries in the burger. Oh, I'd try it. Yeah, I'd try that. At least it's food. Yeah. And then that suit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not like burned or anything. Like, you could put other sweet things on a burger, like a, like a beets. Yeah, yeah. I've had jelly on a burger. Mm. It's not too bad. Some barbecue sauce. Peanut butter on a sweet. burger. Yeah, definitely had that. Yeah. Um, so blueberries don't seem the weirdest in an odd yeah. sense. But like pineapple on a burger. I'd, I'd tear that up. Yeah. I'd be down to fuck with that. Yeah, get on my face. That's yeah. great. This That's going to polarize us with the audience because so many people hate cooked pineapple. Yeah, they're wrong. But blueberries, it's an antioxidant. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's a... And they're tasty. Yeah. And it's food. I mean, my only thing was I bet she, she overcooked the burger. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then it turns into a scene of vomit. The Humperdue vomits and then fucking Cassidy vomits. And it's like, and a, it's, pro, it's not just vomiting; it's hilarious projectile. Vomiting. Yeah, it's a Tarantino amount of vomit. Yeah, and then like, then you find out it's a Sonic, uh, whatever. Yeah, like that fucks up their stomach. Yeah, and then uh, Tulip vomits on Fluffernut or whatever fuck her name is. Mm -hmm. And then Cassie slips in the vomit, and then Tulip so stabs funny. him in the heart with a axe. Yeah. Oh, this episode was disgusting. Yeah. The thing that intrigued me the most is you were you 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 were on board with this episode. You like this episode. Yep, but yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you hate the sight of a lot of blood. Yeah, but anything else, you're just like you're cool with. Yeah, like um, it just makes me queasy, and it's it's okay. it's it's context based. So like, if it's like oh really? Yeah, I mean, so if like a bag of blood isn't gonna fuck you up. No. Okay. Or like, or like. A comical amount of blood from... Kill Bill. Kill Bill. Yeah. But what like if someone's... If I'm watching someone bleed out. What about Reservoir Dogs? Is that oh, one bugging? That's you? fine. Yeah, okay. Because it's a lot. It's kind of... Okay. It's his stomach. It's He got shot If somebody the cuts their arm, you're going to be like... Hit! If it is a bit of a gusher. Especially if they really focus on it. Mm -hmm. This kind of shit makes oh, me Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Um, okay. Basically, I don't know. It's just... That's the it other... It used to be a lot worse. Like, I used to... Th I once threw up when my brother got a bloody nose. Like... <laughs> Okay, all right. But Good like, context. and I, I would pass out. Oh, like, I've Whoa. never been able to give... I've heard of people that do that. Have I ever told you about... I've tried to give blood three times in my life. Okay. Um, Because you're a generous soul. It seems like something right up your alley. Every single time I've passed out before they even stuck my arm. Just like thinking about it? Yeah. Okay. Passed out. And then, and I, I, I like... The last time I was just like, just take the blood if I pass out. And they're like, we can't do that. <laughs> yeah, it's... I was just like, but... <sighs> That's pushing boundaries. But like, I'm gonna, I won't know, and it's mm. fine. Your blood pressure will be lower too. <clears throat> they gotta pump that out of you. So unless they want to have somebody that's. But I remember like watching my mom give blood when I was a kid and thinking it was gross. You know, I give like blood. She brought me along with to give blood, and I was like, I don't really don't like watching this. I've given blood a lot, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah like a ton of times. Um, the issue has been like, well, it's not a super issue. It's not like, oh no, it's just like. Cause I've gotten some tattoos here and there, and you gotta wait a certain amount of time. Piercings as well. Mm -hmm. You gotta wait <coughs> a certain amount of time before you can give again. So it's kind of spaced out a lot of. I haven't since I moved up here, just because mm -hmm. back home we had blood drives a lot. A lot of the factories mm -hmm. I worked at, they would just be in the malls. Like mm -hmm. uh, I saw blood drives all over the place. Maybe they're around, and I'm not paying that much attention. They're not. Um, they're not really that out and about. Mm -hmm. As much as <laughs> they're sucking it from all the people in the south. Yeah, <laughs> I remember like, they would come to our high let school. Let them bleed. They would oh, come to yeah. our high school. That's awesome. They would come to our college. We didn't have that, but that's cool. That's yeah, really like fucking you could blood. like go get out of class for fifteen you minutes. Get blood. Oh, it's young gym. blood too. Yeah, you go down to the gym. The gym. tastiest. You go to the, down to the gymnasium and give it, and like mm -hmm. you had to be like eighteen or whatever, or seventeen or six. I have no idea. Some age, you had to be some age. I'm sure if like if it was young, you could get like a parental. Yeah, thing young dumb full of blood and cum. Yep, yeah, mm -hmm. yep. Swallow mixed all the blood and cum. Mixed together, just nice frothy. 
speaking of Blood and Come, do we have any good... Is there any cool songs in this episode? Because we've had so much good music. We have. What was good was in this one? I don't know. I don't remember if there was like a really... really Nothing stuck out to me. Yeah, I'd have to go back and think about it. But I was Well, talking, that one song, Blood and Come. Yes, exactly. I talking to somebody today about the music By All American season. Rejects. Like, oh, that was the other thing I wanted to talk about. This one is, so Jesus is the lead singer of All American Rejects. I thought, I, for some reason, I thought you knew that already. If you said it, I ignored that. I, it that's was, why I don't think that you said it. I probably didn't then. Like, I, th I think what it was was when this character first came on board on this show. Mm -hmm. was, it was season Humberdew. one? Yeah, he was Humberdew. It was Humberdew. Well, no, because the, 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 the Jesus was fucking in the one episode. You're right. Yep. Okay, I forgot about uh, that. But they're like, and someone said, hey, that's the lead singer from All American Rejects is playing this character. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And maybe I didn't bring it up on the podcast because I assumed everyone would be talking about sure, it. Sure, sure, sure. And like, so. I had no, you told me, I was like, you, you said he's in some band. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh, okay. Cause there's yeah, a lot yeah, of, yeah, and lots of people are in bands. You know, like Fucking Jeremy Johnny Ritter. Depp's in a band. <laughs> Have you seen the Jeremy Renner ads? Yeah. Pause the Preacher podcast. Look Jeremy. Up, look up Jeep. What? That is the... That's awful. Is that not awful? It makes me quite cringe a little bit. I, I want to hear oh. the rest of it in case it's good. Jeremy, no. His singing voice is pleasant and it fits his range. It's you. He's like, well, we're on the road. And he like, like makes the rest of his band get on the fucking bus. And he takes his Jeep and drives it that's off road. That's the most, the one thing I like about oh. that is, you know that he wouldn't be able to be on the road with a huge bus like that unless he was rich. He's self-funding most of that tour. Probably. I don't know. Well, or at least, well, then, I mean, and people are going to go because it's Jeremy Renner, the actor. I would yeah, go. You know, I would see if they were in town. I'd probably like. It's it. like when I saw Macaulay Culkin's shitty band. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they're his oh, band. This is the High Noon for like fifteen yeah. bucks. I'd go. Yeah, fucking his pizza band sucks so bad. But we didn't go see what's his face when his band was here. I didn't. I don't think you did. Hmm. Uh, who's twenty four? Uh, 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 you know, Lost Lost Boys. Uh, Keeper Sutherland. He came. His band. Oh really? The Majestic. Wow. So probably been like twenty five, thirty bucks. Yeah. And I was like. I hear they're actually really good though, but it's also a style of music. They're a little more blues, bluegrassy, a little bit. And I suppose like you can pay musicians to be good. Man, that that Jeremy Renner commercial. Ooh, Manzi. I ooh that. He has a cool haircut. So many notches down for the Renster. And I am I was a huge like defender. He of, was a Ren friend. I was a Renfro. I was a Ren Ren fairy. I was have a, a second one of these guys. Go for it, man. You absolutely should. You you know why? Why? You deserve it. Thank you. But uh, back into the Preacher podcast. I, I don't really have a ton else to say. I, I did want to talk to you a little bit about how it ended. Um, and I, I have a, I, I have a wish. I, a way that I wish everything would end, and a, and a great fucking idea. But I, I wanted to touch in with you again about the whole love triangle, the ship. Oh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so they just had probably delightful sex. Oh, Cass and Tula. such heartbreak when I saw the. Fate, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, please. Uh, I, my heart just ached for Cass. Yeah, that's yeah, like, a tough one because like he had been shelving his feelings because it's my best mate's. It's my best. I pretend I'm having an Irish accent. It's my best mate's girlfriend. Do. All right, thanks. <laughs> You know, you know what your friend Nate, the Irish one, yeah, yeah. Mm. So like, it's his best mates, girl. The Swiss, best mates. Irish. No wait, what Nordic? What's your, what's your people? Uh, your Swiss. My real people or my my made up for that one song people? No, no, no. You're no, no. no I mean like Norwegian. Um, what are you if you're from Nor Nor Norway? Nordic. If you're, you're well, okay, you're Scandinavian. I'm Scandinavian. Well, so okay, so you're you're Irish to, Scandinavian. It's hard to say what I am. Let's just say Irish Scandinavian. Well, yeah. It's a dumb joke. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's what I am. Yeah. Um, so, but, so in your accent. Anyways, um, it just was heartbreaking to see Cass's look. Because, like, he had been push, he'd been pushing those feelings, putting those feelings on a shelf. Mm hmm Right? Mm hmm And a heart-shaped box. Yeah. And, and a backpack. And a backpack, yeah. Threw that bitch in the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. Been he had been do yeah, and, like, all of a sudden, um, the proper amount of time was past three months. Um, Jesse's been dead. Yeah. Um, like, he didn't push it on Tulip. No. You know? No, yeah, that was a, that was... She, he, he went tell her... He were, even said he was gonna, like, back off. He was telling the fucking yeah, angel. Yeah. And he was like, like... And so finally, they finally, 
they get to the point where they just unnatural and it just felt right. It felt right when they went both went in for the kiss. It felt right. Yeah, it was the right moment. And then and it was I was just so happy for them. And then um, Jesse came in and yes, Jesse's Tulip's original original love. Yeah. Right. And like he comes in and I just felt like like he's also got. It's her probably own. hard for Cass. It's hard for Tulip probably too. But like yeah. Cass, it's just like like. One, he's not gonna. He's not, he's. A, I think he's not gonna push it now. No, he's gonna back off, but he's gonna be sad about it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, here's what I think should. Poor happen. boy. He's, he's he's he should go murder some people. Here, yeah. Uh, here's what I would want to happen. Okay. Okay. Look, Tulip. We get it. It's the son of the son of God. Mm-hmm. He, it's a hard. He had a hard time killing him. He talks to weird dogs. Um, <laughs> um, yep, that's a dog. We get it. <laughs> we get it. It's hard to kill him. Yeah. You did kind of leave the door open for the apocalypse. I'm, t- I'm not trying to sling blame. I'm just saying, if we have to put it out there, mm-hmm. it's what happened. Let's move on. So now, don't fuck it up. Mm-hmm. Kill Humperdoo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then to have the Messiah, so you see, you you put off the apocalypse. Mm-hmm. Then so the Messiah is going to have to then uh, fuck up again, have another kid, kid get raised and trained. So you have time, okay? Have part vampire baby with Cassidy, be in a coupling, and have Jesse Custer teach that kid, you know, how to be a badass and the ways of God. Mm-hmm. And you raise... Raise him in a polyamorous a John, freeway. Well, well, he's not a, He's not in the... No, he's... Jesse's toxic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he is Uncle Jesse. All right. Oh, Uncle Jesse. Uncle Jesse. Yeah, that's pretty good. He's got the boots, too. Mm-hmm. Um, so, no, no, no. So, yeah. So, you, you raise him like that. You make a John Connor slash... Uh, Simon Belmont monster killer slash like going after the grail you raise this person teach him all the cool Blade. stuff that you guys know Blade like, half vampire guy yeah but I mean like, Blade half vampire yeah but I, I mean more in the yes yes in that yeah, a Dunpeel a Day Walker Day, Day Walker Day Walker yeah absolutely um, but uh, no 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 like, like raise this kid to be a super badass that then has to stop the apocalypse again because it's gonna take a long time. Mm-hmm. It took Jesus a long time to, to, it's like to in, screw it's, up. Yeah, it's like um, it's like in uh, fucking uh, um, it's like in uh, Good Omens when they like are raising the Antichrist or who they thought was yeah, yeah. exactly that mm-hmm. to then take out uh, Humperdoo too. Mm-hmm. But anyway, that's just my thought. It's not gonna go that way. I'm not. That's not. That's not in the comics. Mm-hmm. Um. But uh, I'm Unless excited. It does. I'm assuming tablet closed. We have no emails this week. No emails. Yeah, no emails. That's okay. But if you were just, if we did have emails, where would they go? Baltic Effect at gmail.com. That's true. Um, yeah, so we got two more episodes left. I don't foresee any stoppages. Um, I think we're going to finish it on out. And uh, that's gonna be, it's going to be it for the video podcast. At yeah. least for a while. You yeah. know, until if something were to come back, um, you know. Who knows? Maybe down the road, Shane will want to do a video yeah. or something or another. I, there are a lot of reasons I could bring it back. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have a lot of fun doing it. And, and I, I I get enjoyment out of your enjoyment of it as well. Mm-hmm. You know, I went to you and I was like, should we do another one here? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we got to do it. So yeah. that, that that sealed the deal. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we're going to go back to regular pod, just the you know audio only. Mm-hmm. Walking Dead's coming back literally the week after uh, this will end. And then I know that there'll be some kind of a podcast for... The Breaking Bad movie. Um, El Camino. Oh my god. I'm so excited. We should get we should talk to like someone. I'm so excited. Like Charles Baker. They're making a breaking bad movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm excited about it too. Uh, anyway, um I know because there's been some talks about some other people, so we might have a massive like five fucking person podcast, who knows? Mm-hmm. Uh, at least discussing that a little bit and saying, yeah, we love it. Uh, I'm not gonna reach out to anybody that's on the shows. That's been that's a long time ago. We'll let them go. But you know. no, they'll come to us. <laughs> Charles Baker in that trailer is so good. Yeah. Uh, anyway, but that's just kind of what's going on down the road. You know, and better uh, better call Saul will come back when it comes back. It, it got pushed back because of the movie, and I'm okay with mm-hmm. that. But that podcast will come back too, and mm-hmm. it'll open up the door. You know, next season to your mystery date. Now it'll open up the door to some other your show. Your mystery date. Some other show that we might cover, something like that. Who knows. It's uh, like and subscribe down here and tell us. If I could, like, yeah, they're like, we got a subscriber, they're gonna quit, and there's like 
a thousand subs or something. Yeah. Like, well, we gotta keep doing yeah. it. Um. Anyway, thank you all for watching and listening. Yeah, thank you. Um. Uh. I, you know, until next time, Nate is nice. Trent is nice. Stella, Stella and Lizzie are pretty kitties, kitties and we, we love you. you. We can't not high five, we did it. Okay, give me that. Put it away. I'm not gonna I touch know, it. I know, I know. You're you're oh! I know. Oh! Just tell the podcast. Okay. I'm gonna do it during it! No. <laughs> That's oh. Oh, you're gonna love it!